Welcome to Labmins.com in our lab video series in Cisco IS 1.2. You can find your playlist of IS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. So why do we need MDM integration on ICE, especially for those of you who are currently running MDM in your environments? Since everything might be working just fine right now, having MDM pushing out wireless profiles for your user personal mobile devices so that they can seamlessly connect to the corporate network. What MDM integration on ICE brings to the table is the ability to provide differentiated access based on device compliance status. So for example, you might only allow internet access for devices that are not compliant instead of completely denying it from the network altogether. Since ICE can now obtain certain device posture information, which it can now include as part of authorization policies. ICE will also, at this point, access the Unify onboarding system for both of your wire and wireless devices. So that way, you don't have to use ICE for wired Windows or Macintosh and use MDM for wireless mobile devices as two separate systems. What this means to you is you will need to disable wireless profile and potentially certificate distribution on your MDM and let ICE take care of those since all devices will now come through ICE for registration. Unfortunately, this is not comes without the price. Two caveats that I can think of is first, the onboarding process will have to be extended since not only that you need to register the device to ICE, there is also an extra step at the ends of registering the device to the MDM, which you will see how that works in this lab. The second caveat is you can no longer have the device onboarded from outside of your corporate network, since the devices will need to connect to the corporate network to communicate with ICE. So these are just a few things that you might want to consider before jumping into the integration of MDM with ICE. Nonetheless, in this lab, we will be configuring ICE to integrate with Mobile Iron MDM. We are going to pick up where we left off from the previous labs, SEC 0113, where we already have the onboarding process working, and we're just going to extend the configuration of the MDM piece. Our Mobile Iron server is already pre-configured, so we will not go into any configuration detail of that server, and we're just going to mainly concentrate on the configuration of the ICE. With that said, let's take a look at our lab diagram. Our lab setup is pretty much carried over from the previous lab with the Cisco ICE 1.2 at the IP of .102, a wireless LAN controller at the IP of .104, a domain controller with the certificate authority server at the IP of .40, and the new component that's introduced in this diagram here is our mobile iron server or VSP version 5.7 at the IP of .105. For a test device, we have our iPhone and Android, and for the user, we still have our employee one that's part of the AD group called employee and BYOD user. Now as far as the configuration of the mobile iron, we have the mobile iron synced up with our Active Directory using LDAP. So that way we have the same user database as well as the ability to map the AD user group to the security policies. For the security policies, we have a very simple policies configured on the server and just, that's just to make sure that the pin or passcode lock is configured on our mobile device and we're going to try to enforce that as part of our compliance check. So just that we understand how the MDM registration play a part on all the onboarding process. As you can see in this flowchart right here, everything pretty much stays the same as far as getting the device onboarded and registered to ICE. As you can see here towards the end, there's additional steps that the mobile device has to go through. Obviously, if we're dealing with a Windows computer, which is going to end right here with the green boxes. But for the mobile devices, we have to continue on and have them register to the MDM. And once they're registered, we have to put them through a compliance check. And based on the result of that, if they're in compliance, then obviously we're going to give them full access. But if they're not, then we can potentially provide only partial access to the network. So just to get started, let me walk you through on what we have configured so far on our mobile iron server, although we're not going to go into uh, the configuration detail for those. So let me bring up a mobile iron interface. I'm just going to lock in. And while it's doing that, let me first show you that we currently have a DNS record for our mobile iron, and that is for lm-mobileiron.labmis.com, since for the server is usually referred to by name. As you can see right here, lm mobile iron, and that's mapped to 32.105. And as I mentioned, we do have our mobile iron integrated with the AD via LDAP. So if you go under settings and look at LDAP configuration right here, it's currently pointing to our domain control at the IP of 32.40 for the domain labmates.com. Right, as far as our user, if you go under users and devices, we already have a user synced up with our AD. As you can see right here, you cannot edit those and the name for the user is employee one with the email address and we also have already assigned appropriate role for the user. Okay if you're familiar with mobile iron there's a concept of label and that's pretty much similar to 
groups. So we created a label called lm-employee. And we're just going to tag all the policies and application using this label. And this label is also going to be assigned automatically to the user that's part of the employee AD group as well. Okay, as far as the policy, we have a policy called LM Security. If you click on those, as you can see, we have a password or pin lock in force. As you can see that it's defined as mandatory. So that's how we're going to test our device compliance. All right, so that's just a high level overview of our mobile iron configuration. Now we're going to start our configuration process for ICE. The first thing we need to do for ICE to communicate with mobile iron, just like anything else, has to be trusted. So the way to do that is we're going to import the mobile iron certificate into ICE and that way they can securely communicate over the API. Okay, so the way to do that, this is on the mobile iron web interface. You can see we can click and view the certificate since we are on HTTPS session. So click view certificate and under detail, we can export. And again, this is for specific to Firefox as a web browser. If you're diff using different web browser, then you're going to have to kind of figure out how to obtain those certificate. So here we can save the certificate to the laptop. It's going to be an extension of .pem or PEM. Okay, so that is safe. We're going to use that in a little bit here. But while we're still on the web interface for the mobile iron, the next thing we need to do is to configure a user that ICE can use to communicate with mobile iron. So that's going to be under user. And this is going to be local user that we need to create. So we need to click add local user. For the user ID, I'm just going to call it ice underscore MDM, first name ice, last name MDM, display name is ice underscore MDM, password, it needs to meet the complexity. So I'm going to do Cisco123 with uppercase C. And then for the email address, although it doesn't really matter, we're going to give it ice underscore MDM at labmis.com. Looks like we have a typo on the password, so let me do that. Hit save. And to make sure that the local user that we just created has the correct privilege, we have to assign a role. So checkbox on the username and then click assign roles. And the only role that this particular user requires is for API, since I is going to be talking API to the mobile iron. As you can see here, roles is now API. And that's pretty much all you need to do on the mobile iron just to prep and have it ready for the integration. Now we can jump back to ICE. And the first thing is to add the certificate we just downloaded. So under administration, certificate operation, we go to certificate store, and then we'll import certificate. Okay, we'll browse, point to the LM mobile iron. So just copy the name. So that way I can put that for the friendly name. And we'll trust the certificate and then we'll submit. Okay, and just verify that the certificate is added right here. So right now, I should already trust the mobile iron. Next thing is to go under administration and add mobile iron as the MDM server. So click MDM. We'll click add. Give it a name. We'll call it LM dash mobile iron. Okay, so for the host name, it's going to be the name lm dash mobile iron dot lab minutes dot com. And this is why you have to make sure that this particular name is resolvable via DNS. So for the port, it's always going to be 443 for mobile iron unless you change it from the default. Instead name, we can skip. Username is the user that we created on mobile iron. And that would be ice underscore MDM with the password, Cisco123. And you can test connection to make sure that they can talk or communicate successfully. And if that's the case, you will see this informational popped up right here and said MDM server details are valid and connectivity was successful. And this is when you know that we have a good connectivity to the MDM server. Okay, we'll make sure you check box for enable and then we'll submit. All right, and everything goes well. If you jump over to the dictionaries and look at system and MDM at this point, you should be able to see the dictionary attributes that's specific to MDM. So these are the kind of attributes that we can use as part of our authorization policies, which we will use in a second here when we configure those. 
Okay, so now that our integration is completed, we're not going to have to make modification to authentication authorization policies. And the next thing we're going to do is to create a couple more authorization profiles that's going to be used as part of the MDM integration. So the first one we are going to create is for when the device has been fully onboarded but not registered to the MDM. So the action would be redirect to the MDM URL. So for the name we're going to do debulan MDM no reg. So this is uh, signify this null registration or haven't been registered to the MDM. And then the action is going to be web redirection. And the option we're going to choose is MDM redirect. Okay, for the ACL, at this point, we need to make sure that the user will have access to the MDM as well as the ability to download the app for their mobile device. Okay, so let me jump over real quick to our WiseLine controller and the ACL. Actually, it timed out, so let me lock in. The ACL that we're going to be using is called LM ice MDM only. As you can see, it's allow the device to talk to ice, which is 1.2, MDM, which is 1.5. And then we're blocking everything to our internal resource subnet. And since we don't really know, unless you go through with the process and trying to find out what's the IP of, for example, the Apple iTunes or the Google Play, then at this point, we're just going to let the device talking freely to the internet. And that way we know for sure that the device will have ability to download the application for the mobile iron. Okay, so let me just copy the name for the ACL. Go back to MDM redirect, and this is the ACL. Okay, so if you scroll further, you can see we have a two Cisco AV pair, one for the redirect ACL, and this one for a URL redirect. And this is how the device will get redirected to the MDM registration page. Okay, so submit. We are going to create another authorization profile, and this is when the device is registered to MDM but has been determined as not in compliant, and we're just going to allow internet only access at that point. So we're going to create one with the name called debulan underscore mdm underscore non-compliant. We still want to redirect the user to mdm. If this is trying to access the internal resource when they're in a non-compliant state. And then for the ACL, we're going to use lm internet only. Okay, and if you go over to our WSLAN controller one more time and look for the LM internet only, and see it permits uh, UDP for DSCP, DNS, and then make sure we're still permitting communication to ICE and MDM, and then we'll block everything that's private IP, and then we'll allow everything else, which is internet. Okay, so let's go and submit that. And that should be all we need for the authorization profile. Now we have going to have to modify our authorization policies. So let me jump over to the policy set. And we have one created from the previous video for our debulan uh, onboarding for wireless. So we have the blacklist just to, for a quick review. We have one for redirecting the device or user to the de device registration page and the one that's allow full access once they have registered to ICE. So at this point if you plan to onboard Windows computer, for example, we're going to have to make a distinction between Windows machine and the mobile devices since we're not going to put the Windows computer through the MDM registration. That wouldn't make sense. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is to come up with a policies for profiling. So we're going to make use of profiling to figure it out what type of device that is. So the next thing we're going to do is to create a logical profile that contains a group of device type, and that would be under policy and profiling for logical profile by default is ip phone so let's create a new one and the first one is going to be for a windows machine so we're going to call it lm underscore windows and then these are the profiling information that we can use to build a group so the first thing you want to do is add microsoft workstation and then you can be more specific as far as windows 7 workstation Let's see if we can do a shift right here if you can and then windows 8 windows X, xp for example okay so that will be a group of windows devices 
We're going to create one more for the device that you want to put through the MDM registration. And we're going to call this one LM Smartphone. And the first one is for Apple. Since we're dealing with Apple iPhone here, so we're going to add Apple iPhone as well as Android. Okay, so obviously if you have the iPad or iPod or anything else that's supported by your MDM, you're going to add it right here. Okay, so submit. Now we have a logical profiles that we can use. Now we can go back to the authorization policies and modify this rule. So for this one right here, it's going to be just for the Windows computer, since this is where their onboarding process is going to end. So let me click edit. And then we're just going to have to add one additional condition. So add attribute value. And this is for logical profile. And that's under the endpoints. And right here, you have an option for a logical profile. And then we can choose our LM windows. Okay, so if your devices are profiled properly and been identified as windows, it will match this rule right here for onboarding. Okay, next we have to come up with a almost identical authorization rules for our mobile devices. So we're going to duplicate below. And then we're going to call this one WLAN MDM no reg. That means device has been fully onboarded but not registered or hasn't been registered to the MDM. Okay, at that point, all of these conditions should be true. So just to review real quick, is they should be coming in as a wireless.1x, authenticate as eptls, should be a part of BYOD user, otherwise it shouldn't be allowed to go through BYOD. The airspace WLAN ID should be one, and that's our LM internal SSID. For BYOD registration status should be equal to yes. And logical profile, we said we're going to match the smartphones and we need to add one more condition and that's based on the registration status of the device. And that will be under MDM right here. And you can see there's a device register status and that would have to be equal unregistered. So these are the devices that hasn't been registered. And what we want to do is to redirect to MDM. So the profile or authorization profile that we need is called WLAN MDM no reg. Okay, click done. Now the next rule we're going to create is for the device has been registered but not in compliant. So we're going to duplicate below since the majority again of these are going to be the same. So MDM would be non-compliant. We'll make slight modification and instead of device being unregistered, we'll make it registered and we'll add one more condition. And this is for the compliant status. So we'll choose the compliance status. Obviously, if you want to get very granular, when you do the compliance status, it's based on whatever policies that's in configure on the MDM. And it's up to the MDM to consider whether his device is in compliant or not compliant. But if you want to do a very specific check yourself, things like this encryption, pin lock status, or jailbroken status, or other manufacturers or model, then you can do so right here. But by doing it, using device compliance status, we're just going to do a simple check based on the status that shows on the MDM. Okay, so we're going to say not compliant. And if the device is not compliant, then we're going to enforce a profile called MDM not compliant. And if you remember, we had that configured so the device only have internet access. Okay, so done. And the last rule that we need to create is for the one that is compliant. So we'll duplicate below. And instead of non-compliant, we'll make it compliant. And we just need to make a slight adjustment. Instead of non-compliant, we'll be compliant. And if that's the case, then we will allow full access. So that would be WLAN permit all. Okay, save. And at this point, we should be ready to start testing the MDM integration with our test devices.